All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we are live in full effect with the one, the only Canadian hip-hop artist, and in my personal opinion, man, judge you by the things he has done, living legend, we got Spitting Image right here live on the line. How are you doing this evening? Good, man, good. I love that intro. Thank you. Hey, man, I'm just speaking the truth, bro. I got to say, doing doing my homework on you this morning, man, I got to say, I was absolutely blown away by the stuff that you have done man you know what i mean it's it's really hard for canadian hip-hop artists to really blow up man so it's really good to see that a fellow canadian actually blew up and is getting his accolades yeah man i, I mean it's uh it's been a grind like anything uh, but um you know a lot of it is per, uh, paid off pretty good man but i gotta ask you man like taking you back to the very beginning like what actually sparked your music career man like what actually made you decide to, to you know to get it to get into music so uh, it's funny because like growing up, man, uh, my sister had all the good CDs. My older sister had like DMX, had like uh, Marshall Mathers LP. So I used to like go in her room and like steal her CDs and like bump hip hop when I was like 12 years old. Um, so that's kind of how it all started. Really loved hip hop uh, from day one. How it actually started with me writing is uh, I was playing high school football and I had a really hard practice. It was like a four hour practice and I went home and like wrote a, like a little bit of a diss record to one of my coaches, like just getting stuff off my chest. So that's literally the backstory and how it all started. And I got to ask you, man, you know, I got to say that, that sounds like a pretty cool story, but did you actually go to your coach and just like one day just, just rap it to him? And like, and if so, what, what did he do, man? Cause I'm actually really curious. Oh man, no, like I, I, I would not have the balls to do that because he would have made me run, run sprints the whole practice. <laughs> it was more of like, uh, yeah, like I said, just getting it off my chest and getting some words to the paper. But uh, yeah, man, I wasn't crazy enough to go like spit, spit my battle rap at him. Hey man, judging by how good of an artist you are, man, you instead of like making you do sprints, you might have just been like, you know what, go, 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 go the fuck home. You know what I mean? You're grounded for a week. <laughs> for sure, bro. For sure. But also, man, I want to take you back to 2009, man. I, I had to look really deep to actually find this one, man. But you actually burst into the Canadian hip-hop scene as one-third of the trio called Live Feedback. And I was wondering, man, like, what's the story behind that amazing trio? And, of course, man, how did you actually meet the other members? Okay, so, yeah, it was Live Feed. Um, basically, the, the guy I rap with, uh, Jamie, my, he's my one of my best friends, like, still my best boy, like, still grew up with him and stuff like that. And me and him started, he went under the MC name Tranquil Flow, and I came up with my spit and image. And we we used to work together, like after high school, we were working for The Brick and going to university. We were taking law classes, and we were just, like, passionate about music. And we started rapping. We started freestyling in class, you know, skipping class, going to, you know, to the studio and stuff like that. And we met a guy when we worked at The Brick Furniture named Selecta Gallus. Now, he's a huge dance hall DJ, still in Ottawa today, still doing his thing. Much love to Gallus, everything. He had a studio at his, uh, his house. And me and Jamie, uh, we just started recording with them, kind of putting this project together. And, yeah, man, it was, uh, it was a pretty cool experience, man, to really start uh, with uh, one of your best friends and some guy that, like, you've literally never, you know, heard of until you started working with them. And it was in the reggae scene, too. And I got to ask, man, like, so for the people that don't know that group, did you guys put out any albums? And if so, like, where can we actually snag ourselves a couple copies? So, uh, we put out one mixtape. Um, the dream died before it even started, but we put out one mixtape, and it was called Live Feed uh, Mixtape. I'm pretty sure you can find it on, like, maybe, uh, what was it? Uh, what's that one? My, MySpace. I think we still had some on MySpace. I have a couple copies on my computer. I can hit up anyone. Just email me if you want one. Spitandimagemusic.ca. Uh, Gmail, but yeah, man, uh, we we created one record, and kind of before it all started, um, my buddy decided, you know, he was gonna walk away and do some other things, and uh, yeah, kind of the group died right there. Hey, well, man, you know what? M maybe you guys can get to get get back together sometime and actually do a little reunion, like little Ontario wide concert or something, man. Oh, mortal! I'm telling you, bro. Every time I see that guy, like we can we spit freestyles. This guy can still rap. Like, 100%. Well, hey, if you ever hear this, man, what are you waiting for? Make it happen, man. After COVID-19, it's the best thing to do, man. People are going to be 
going to concerts like No Tomorrow. They're gonna be there. It's gonna be like crack to people, man. So they're gonna <laughs> want it. Exactly. <laughs> Let's exactly. make it happen. Yeah, man. <laughs> but no, honestly, man, I really hope you guys actually get get back at that, man. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I saw you guys. It looks like you guys had phenomenal chemistry. I think the picture I saw was actually you guys actually at a venue doing a show. Yeah, man. We our first show. I don't know if it's still around, but our very first was at Vincent Massey Park out, outdoors, and our first club show was at Capitol Music Hall, and we ended up pretty much selling it out, um, our very first show, which was absolutely crazy, and you're right, man, like, that guy's my boy, and, you know, like, still to this day, he's still a best friend, and, like, uh, being up on stage with him, like, you were saying, too, like, the chemistry was unmatched, and, like, we'd feed off each other, and it was so effortless. And also, man, taking you to 2014, you actually did a song called uh, Pound Cake Remix with a Canadian hip-hop duo by, by the name of Storytellers. I was wondering, yeah. how did yourself and Storytellers get connected? And of course, what's the story behind that amazing collaboration? Uh, the story was behind it, man. So, like, after a couple uh, early records were done, I hooked up with this cat named Big Caesar, uh, who's one half of the duo of Storytellers. Um, Big Caesar actually started producing and started uh, organizing my debut album, The Road I'm On. Um, so I was in the studio with him constantly, and um, he was doing so, he was doing his own EP with Storytellers. And uh, he was like, yo, man, like, I got that record. Do you remember, like, that Drake song? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like, I've heard that. And he's like, we're going to do some, we're going to do a record to it. I was like, yo, man, for sure. And, like, they asked for a 16. And I was like, of course. Like, it was family back then, you know? So I was more than happy to do it. And I got to ask, was that the only work that you guys actually did? Or or, or did, have you guys done other work previously as well? We had uh, we had a bunch of work. Um, that a lot of it got unreleased because we were talking about like making like a record, like a whole album together. Um, we did like this TDMG stuff. Uh, that was Caesar's like kind of label thing he was trying to build back then, and we ended up doing a cipher and stuff like that. We did a couple records, and uh, yeah, it was a pretty cool experience, man. I've done some other stuff with Caesar on the road I'm on, and uh, yeah, JOC is uh, doing some amazing things things for Indigenous Hip Hop right now. I think he's uh, nominated for the Indigenous Awards coming up, but uh, shout outs to them, man, for sure. And also as well, man, uh, jumping ahead in the timeline a little bit, man, you actually uh, opened up for a Canadian hip hop artist by the name of Dax, man, on December 18th, 2019. I gotta ask, man, what was that amazing experience like for you? And did you get the opportunity to chop it up with him after the show? Um, so Dax was uh, Dax was super dope. I didn't like I didn't really hear about him too much until um, Diamond Mine offered me the show, and I started like really listening to his music. And the guy's crazy talented. And I heard before going into that show, I heard he puts on an amazing live show. Um, so I was pretty stoked, man, to like actually get the opportunity to, to rock the stage and stuff. And he didn't disappoint, dude. Like he came on, uh, cause I think he, like before he was a janitor or something, but he came on in the janitor's uniform and like a mop up and stuff. And he's just doing his thing. And then he busts out into his rapping and like, he got the crowd so hyped, man. It was good to spend, like take notes off a stage performer like that because his show was honestly one of the best I've, I've seen. I got to, like, tell him that. So I was like, dude, like, you know, your live show is incredible. Like, he's a rapper's rapper, and, like, he can spit. But it was also cool to see that, like, it was, like, again, effortless for him on stage, same presence, you know, stuff like that. It was, uh, it was pretty crazy. And I got to ask you, man, I, I really hope that one day I see yourself and Dax actually do a collaboration, man. I just think both of your guys' hip-hop styles together would really clash and make a phenomenal joint. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet, man. I'd definitely be down for that. And also, man, going back a little bit, because I just realized I actually missed this question on my list, but in 2015, man, you actually released a phenomenal album uh, titled The Road I'm On. And I, I, I really want to know, man, like, what's the story and inspiration behind that phenomenal record? And, of course, where can we snag ourselves a copy, man? Because I've been jamming to that record, and i got to say, that is some real Canadian hip-hop, in my personal opinion. Uh, respect, man. Um, the road I'm on was basically from where I was coming, like we were saying earlier, the being a part of the trio of live feed, and where I was as a, a solo artist, kind of like the road I'm on, you know, mentally and physically, you know, where I'm going, where I'm trying to go with this hip-hop stuff, 
uh, where I'm going in my life. And kind of it was like a, an opening to the storybook I'm telling through these last couple records I've been making. Um, it featured uh, my homies Philly Moves. I have a lot of love for them. Uh, Angela Rosman, who's like a super talented singer. She's making like amazing moves in Nashville. Uh, Caesar, Ryan, like, you know what I'm saying, man? Like it was just basically everywhere I was at at that time and where I, I'm planning to go with this music, you know, the road I'm on. And I gotta say as well, man. Like I know, I know it's a fairly like old record, but do you have any like hard copies available as well? That way, our listeners can really uh, purchase themselves a hard copy if they haven't done so already. For now, uh, like, I think I have a couple hard copies, but I have it on my uh, my Bandcamp, which is spitandimagemusic.bandcamp.com. Um, you can check it out there. You can purchase it there, um, stuff like that. But yeah, um, I think there's a couple around, but. Yeah, my band camp's the best way to go right now. And also as well, man, on March 1st, you actually had the opportunity to open up for Cameron, which is one of my personal favorite East Coast hip-hop artists of the Diplomats. But I have to ask you, man, what was that experience like, and did you get the chance to meet Cameron after the show? Um, so that show again, like that was through Diamond Mind, uh, shout out Brandon Bird, I got a lot of love for him. Um, camera was pretty crazy, um, doing that show too, because, you know, I, I remember growing up with like, oh boy, you know, like that whole pink mixtape, everything like that, you know, and it was pretty crazy, man, to, to get the opportunity. I only got to only pass a couple words before he was going on stage, like it was, I didn't really see much of him, like he was kind of in and out almost, but um, he definitely did his thing, and it was like, it was really cool to see the energy he has again too, and like, uh, Barry Moore's was absolutely packed at that show, so it was uh, it was a pretty sweet experience, man, for sure. Oh, man, Moles Def, when you said, oh, boy, man, just, just in my head there, it actually brought, <laughs> brought me back, man. I remember this, uh, the, the uh, joint he dropped with uh, Jules Santana, man, Hey Ma. Every time I heard that song when oh, I was yeah. younger, it made me feel like a pimp. Oh, yeah, summer song, 100%. <laughs> Oh man, most definitely. It made you just want to mack on the honeys, you know what I mean? When really, you're just a young little white fat kid that really couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh man, those were the days. But no, man, I really do hope that, you know, uh, COVID-19 ends soon, man, so we can act- so you guys can actually go back to doing shows and, you know, you can get back to opening up for such a legendary individuals. Uh, it's, uh, it's been trying, man. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely one of the, my favorite things to do as a hip-hop artist um, is to be on stage, especially, too, like towards the end of 2019 and going into 2020, I was doing shows pretty much weekly. Um, so it was a, definitely a huge change, man, to go from doing them almost every week and, you know, enjoying the experience to, like, literally, like, lock down and, you know, trying to find other avenues where, you know, I can succeed in music and keep doing my music. And, you know, another amazing artist I saw that you opened up for, and I don't want to go go off on all the people you opened up for, man, but I know it is Mad Child as well, man. I just want to commend you on that, you know, because not a lot of Canadian hip-hop artists really have the opportunity to open up for another fellow Canadian hip-hop legend like him, man. So I just want to commend you on just opening up for Swollen Member's own Mad Child. Yeah, uh, I think it was like, I've done it like three or four times. Um, he's super cool, man. Like, I know there, there's a lot of flack. He gets a lot of flack sometimes. Um, but, like, the dude, every time I've gotten to speak to him, is nothing but humble and a, a good dude. Honestly, man. Uh, his energy, too, right? Like, he has such a loyal fan base and such a huge following of a particular group that every time he goes and performs, they're all out, like, back and stuff. Um, they're all out, like, supporting him, and, like, he feeds off that. And, like, dude, like I said, I've seen him, like, three or four times. He's he's super dope, too. I had the opportunity to meet him when I was just just fresh into the bar scene. You know, I was 19, and mm-hmm. he came to Brockville, and he was a really humble, humble guy. I tried to stay for the concert afterwards, but I was way too loaded. I had to go home. <laughs> hey, but I got my meet and greet, buddy, you know what I mean? So at least, at least I got the opportunity to meet him before I passed out. Yeah, exactly. Then you wake up next day hungover. You're like, oh yeah, I did do that. Sick, sick. I, I'm not gonna lie. I totally forgot I actually met him, and it only the memories didn't come back for about a week or so. And then I really looked at the photo, and I was like, oh, I remember now. Yeah, nice. Where's that autograph on my hand for? <laughs> I didn't get his autograph, unfortunately. But hey, I, I'm more of the kind of guy I really like the pictures more than the autographs because at least then you can yeah. you can still say, hey, I met him, and people will believe you, right? 
Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh, you're not full of shit. You know? No, no, I swear. <laughs> I was just drunk, man. I swear. But on March 12th of last year, man, you actually won Entertainer of the Year at the Capitol Music Awards. And I got to ask you, man, can you tell us a bit more about that night? And, of course, how does it feel to be an award-winning artist? Um, it was crazy, man. Um, so I think it started in February or March, yeah, uh, where the nomination started. And I guess a couple of my fans just threw my name in the hat because they were looking for artists that were doing big things and stuff like that. And um, I remember somebody DM me and they're like, dude, like, you got nominated. And I was like, you know, like, oh, yeah. And I was like, that was an cr- incredible experience, right, just to be nominated. I think Misha was nominated, Dynamic, like, Jumpin' Joe Fett. Like, there was so many good artists, and it was, like, just an honor just to be nominated. Um, it was an online voting thing, so, like, I really pushed my fan base to really, you know, like, hey, man, throw this vote out. I've been working hard. I've been doing shows, you know, to do your thing. Um, so we got to the, the award ceremony that night, you know, just, again, doing my thing and just, you know, eh, um, hoping I'd win. And they come up, you know, they're like, okay, here's the Entertainer of the Year Award. And it is Spit and Image. And I'm just kind of sitting there, and I look over, and I'm just like, you know, you kind of shocked. You're just like, they call my name? And yeah, you know, like, it was funny, too. So, like, I went up on stage, and, like, I didn't have a speech prepared. I didn't have anything. I was like, you know, just like, holy crap, you know, I won. And I, I just got up, and I was like, this is for my daughter. And I just came back down on stage, but... Really, man, it was for all the late nights and, you know, early mornings of, you know, working your nine to five, investing in yourself and, you know, like fighting the self-doubt. It was it was just, a, you know, validation for all my hard work and for everything I, I felt I've done, you know, so. And I got to say as well, man, you, you, you should get yourself a bigger trophy case, man, because with the music that you're actually producing, I'm going to be honest with you, man, there's going to be a lot more awards coming your way. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I I hope so. Like I said, man, it's it's super nice to get recognized. Uh, you know, like it's it's such a corny saying, but it's like yes, we don't do it for awards. But like, you're lying if you're saying that it's not a good feeling, man, to win something from your art. You know. Hey, man, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, man. I know exactly how that feels. I won an award here at the radio station, and at first I was like, you know, I don't want I don't want awards, but then I got a trophy, and it's like, yo, man, I want another one now. Yeah, man, it's it's such a good feeling, bro. Like it really is, and I, like I said, uh, for everyone that voted and took their time and shared it on their Facebook, shared it in their personal messages, like all my fans, shout out, love you guys, you know. And also, man, I saw via Spotify that you actually teamed up with Robbie G, Big Caesar, and Jordan Greer for the song "Blessed Ones." I was wondering if you can tell our listeners a bit more about that phenomenal song, and of course, how did you actually get connected with the other three individuals? Um, so, again, it was through Big Caesar, um, he started putting the record together, and what was cool, man, is, like, I met Robbie G, like, oh, five years ago, six years ago, at, uh, Canadian Music Week, so, like, and when I was on tour, uh, back in the day, we had a Kitchener stop, I got to meet him there, too, um, so it was cool to chop it up, and then Big Caesar was doing his album, and he decided to put this record together. Jordan Greer was like a singer that he was kind of um, working with at the time and stuff, and he said he's going to reach out to Robbie G, and I was like, oh, that's my boy, you know, like, I, I know Robbie, like, this good stuff, so uh, he put it all together, and like, Jordan kills her, her kills the hook, and I think me, Big, and uh, Robbie, you know, each come really hard with our own styles on each, like, 16, which was, uh, it was pretty cool, man, I, I really liked that record. And I, got, I really, I gotta say, I really liked it as well, man. Like, and, and I always like encouraging individuals that are listening to always purchase the songs rather than to stream. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, guys, make sure you run that track up because if you haven't heard it, make sure you listen to it and put that on repeat. Play it over and over again. Let's get these guys <laughs> the residuals they deserve. Yes, sir. But also, man, I saw as well that you actually have a new project coming with the one and only Master Ace straight out of Brooklyn, man. I got to ask you, how did yourself and Master Ace get connected? And of course, what can we expect from this project coming out this summer? Okay, man. So uh, I'm working on a new album, Arrival. Uh, It's going to be my third album. Um, So basically how it started, bro, is uh, I have a record on that album with Wordsworth. 
And um, Wordsworth is part of a group, or was part of a group, called EMC with Master Ace, uh, Punchline, and Strickland. Um, now, so basically, I, I reached out. We have a record. So he's spinning his verse. Um, Wordsworth spinning his verse on uh, his Instagram Live. So I'm listening to it and stuff like that, and he posted, and the Master Ace likes it. So I'm like, okay, cool, you know, and then, like, I'm just like, you know what, I'm, what the hell, I'm going to reach out for him. Mass Ace is, like, one of my top five rappers. I grew up, like, loving, I love Mass Ace, right? Uh, so I'm already a big fan, so I reached out to him, and the guy is super receptive, you know, super involved, too, you know, he was super down to do it right away. Um, awesome guy. And, uh, yeah, man, so sent him the beat. We were kind of going through it and stuff like that. And what was cool, Immortal, is, like, me and me, Mass Ace created a record. We didn't just throw two verses on a song together and, you know, just here you go. Because when you're doing a bigger feature, like, sometimes that kind of happens. You just throw two verses together, whereas cool, like, me and Mass Ace were able to create a record together, even, you know, him being in New York or New Jersey where he lives right now and, you know, me being in Ottawa. So going back and forth, man, uh, sending the verses, you know, kind of creating this idea for the record. It was uh, actually amazing. And I got to say, I'm excited for that as well. I'm a huge Mass Days fan, so just being able to, you know what I mean, just know that a Canadian artist is working with one of my favorite New York legends, man. It's going to be dope, and I really think that you guys are going to do a phenomenal job. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I think so, too. I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised with the record. It's, you know what, man, if you, if, you listen to my music, if you listen to my music, if you listen to Mass Days' music, you know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be that feel-good hip-hop, you know, um, you know, that golden era. But I got to ask you, Spittin' Image, what is next for you, man? Is there anything I missed during this interview? Anything else you still want to talk about or promote while we still have you here live on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM? Uh, you know what, man? I just want to give a shout-out to everybody that's doing their thing in this uh, Ottawa scene. There's a lot of rappers. Um, I don't have time to list them all, but I, like, I just want to big each and every one of them up for doing what they got to do and chasing their dreams. For me, man, uh, I'm working with State Platinum right now, so I'm working with Bully Zone and Twig. They're building a brand-new studio um, just down by... Um, Wildrift and stuff like that. It's crazy. They've just bought a soundboard. They're doing all that. So I'm going to be working and finishing off my latest album, Arrival, in there in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, too, man. Um, really excited to have that. I also did, um, a couple months ago, I did, I was part of South African Music Week. Now, um, it was an opportunity brought to you, uh, brought to be my Natalie. Uh, she works for her own management company. Um, and yeah, man, so I got to do a song with another Trap Story who's um, a group from South Africa. They produced a couple records. I was on them. We shot a music video over here. And we did like a, an international COVID song with artists around the world from Jamaica, from Canada, from the U.S., France, Japan. Um, it was a pretty cool collaboration, man. So like I was able to do that international thing the last couple months. I was working on that. Again, while uh, while trying to finish up Arrival, so shout out to everyone involved that really hooked me up, and I think hopefully, depending on travel arrangements and COVID and stuff like that, hopefully I'll be flying down to South Africa sometime soon and doing the next year's South African Music Week. But also, spinning image, just the time in the interview quickly, right before I wrap things up, that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, but also your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay updated on everything spinning image if they're not already doing so. For sure, man. Uh, follow me on Instagram at spitting image music. Twitter, at Spittin' Image, Facebook, Spittin' Image. You can buy all my music, you know, uh, we were saying earlier, streaming's great, but you can actually buy the records at www.spittinimage.bandcamp.com. Uh, purchase all that merch, whichever, and uh, yeah, stream it up, Spittin' Image, Spotify. That's S-P-I-T-T-E-N, Image. And I got to say, first and foremost, man, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy evening. Like, I love doing interviews, man. I really do. But the one thing I love the most is giving back to amazing, talented artists in Canada, man. So 
It was an honor, man, and most definitely a privilege. And I hope down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. You're yeah, more I would be more than down, man. Uh, this is big up to your show and everything, your station, for all you're doing, man. I've seen uh, so many crazy guests have come through. So uh, for you to take your time to interview me, man, much love and blessings to you. Hey, man, I greatly appreciate that, man. I look at it as, you know, uh, art, no matter no matter how, what stature you are within the entertainment industry, whether you're famous, Grammy Award winning, or underground, if you can spit bars and you have the talent, at the end of the day, man, an artist is an artist to me. I just help. I just like helping to elevate of all hip hop artists of all genres, of all levels, man. So, in my personal opinion, you're just as good as the next one, man. So, you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. And we here at Outlaw Radio, we're gonna keep spinning your joints. Respect, man, and I look forward to it. Hey, man, most definitely. Thank you so much, and have yourself a good night. Thanks, man. You too.